The other kind of thing that you can do with the button is assign it to variable functions such as um, such as choosing a non-CPU lens. If you have a whole bunch of non-CPU lens saved in memory you can uh, hold the button down and turn one of the wheels and it'll scroll through them. I can demonstrate that real quick. So I just chose that to be my function button. I'll show you my screen. I hold the function button down and now it goes through my lenses that I have. I've only got two of them defined as you see lens 2 and lens 3. Uh, can have up to what, nine apparently. Um, so I guess if you've got, if you want quick access to your manual modes, one thing that you might want to use that for is if uh, you've got a teleconverter on that's analog or not analog but non-CPU, then it'll turn your CPU lens into a non-CPU lens. And so, um, say you've got uh, a zoom lens where that aperture changes. Uh, as you zoom through it, you might want to have like uh, some typical settings. Say your lens goes from 2.8 to 4. You could have a uh, custom lens saved for when you've got the teleconverter in there for 2.8 and for when you have the teleconverter in there and the lens zoomed all the way in at 4. So at 2.8 it would be a, um, a uh, 5.6 and at f4 your uh, teleconverter would turn your lens into an f8 so you could save the same lens in here twice one as a one as a you know like 70 millimeter f5.6 and the other one could be like a 300 millimeter f8 and then as you zoom from one end of the zoom to the other with your now turned into a manual non cpu lens all you have to do to change the settings is hold the button down and then scroll to the other setting of the lens. So that's what that would be useful for. Um, let's go back to here. This one step speed per aperture means, um, I'll show you what it says. It basically means if you want to be able to jump through exposures one stop at a time, you hold that button down and if you're in aperture mode or aperture priority mode, where you're holding that button and you scroll through the apertures, it'll jump one stop value at a time. If you're holding the shutter, or if you're in shutter priority mode, it will jump through the shutters um, one stop at a time, which means it'll go from 250 to 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to 4,000 to 8,000 in single steps or single clicks. So it's just a way to jump through, uh, through settings one stop at a time. And, case you, I mean, you can set your camera so that the wheels always move one stop at a time. By default, they move one third at a time, and this is kind of an override if you like to use one third at a time most of the time. Auto bracketing lets you assign what kind of auto bracketing you want. So I just assigned auto bracketing to my function button. I can choose how many frames I want, three frames, five frames, seven frames, nine frames, going from underexposed to overexposed, or I can go the other way around and choose two frames underexposed, two frames overexposed, three frames under, three frames over, and that's it. You can't do up to nine frames over. The only way you can do nine frames is starting from under and going to over. The other thing you can change is how many stops per frame the adjustment is. You can go anywhere from a third of a stop per frame up to one stop per frame. That gives you a maximum range of nine stops with nine frames. Uh, let's go back in there. The next and last mode that you can set that's variable is your dynamic area. And now I'll show you if I set the camera to dynamic area, which it is, and hold down my function button, I can choose 9 point dynamic area, 21 point, 51 point, or 51 point 3D. So those are all the things you can do assigned to the, the buttons. All three buttons can be assigned to any one of those features. One of the nice features that I didn't talk about before was the um, ability to store white balance measurements in memory. So say you've got a little, um, a little macro studio set up for selling stuff on eBay that has the, uh, some, some little lights that you use to light it up 
and uh, you always need to remeasure the white balance when you're using that setup because incandescent or fluorescent just doesn't quite get it right or you want it perfect. So what you do is you uh, set the camera for for uh, pre-measured white balance, which we are now, and we're gonna take a measurement. So I'm gonna find a gray target to shoot at and take a picture. Oops, I've got live view on. It doesn't work that way. So I'm holding down white balance, pointing the camera at my target, take a picture. Camera says good. So my white balance is good. Um, so now what I want to do, now that I've like measured this white balance for this particular environment, say it's a, it's my little eBay lab, I'm going to go into okay, you go to the shooting menu, white balance, choose preset manual, and now you see D0 is the one that is the default memory slot you've got four savable ones and zero is the one that you've last measured with the camera. So say I want to save my D0 white balance as a D1. I hit the middle of the joypad on the back of the camera, a little multi-selector that goes up, down, left, right. I choose copy D0. That's going to copy the one that's my default white balance, the, the one that I've just measured, into memory slot one. So I hit OK and now I've copied D0 to D1 and now I can name it I hit the center of the button again I do edit comment and I could say like eBay if I wanted to but I don't so the other thing you can do is if you took a picture a while ago that you want to use the same white balance of you can hit the button for the white balance and choose select image and then find the image that you used that had the white the correct white balance, the one that you measured maybe a while ago or something like that. Choose it and there you go. Now memory slot 2 uses the white balance from that picture that I took. And you've got four white balance settings to go from. Now uh, you don't have to go into the menu to choose these after you've set them. You can uh, hold down the white balance button and so as you see I now I'm holding on the white balance and I'm moving the bottom or the back dial. The back dial goes through the different flash uh, or the white balance compensations from auto, incandescent, fluorescent, sunny, flash, cloudy, uh, shadow, shade, manual temperature setting, uh, or my pre-measurement. And when I move the front selector, I can choose the one that I just measured. I can choose memory slot one, memory slot two, three, or four. And you can hit the white balance and see which one it is, so D4.